Hi, welcome to this presentation about the ancient healing keys. I am very excited to share this information with you because I think it's something that absolutely everybody can benefit from. So, hi, my name is Jane Smolnick. I'm a naturopathic doctor, iridologist, and a certified intuitive healer. And I'm located in Asheville, North Carolina, but I work with people from all over. So this is a very exciting program, something that I've been actually working on developing for a number of years. And I just find that underneath absolutely everything is underlying issues in our energy field that need to get cleared. And then things can shift very rapidly. So I invite you to just take a look at this and see. It might be something you'd be interested in um, working on some sessions for yourself, or you may like to take this certification course as well. So let me share my screen and um, here we go and play my slideshow. Okay. So this is the ancient healing keys. Um, this is something I just want to explain that's absolutely fascinating work. I think it's something that you may benefit from. So do you relate to any of these particular issues? Chronic pain, many people have chronic pain, a chronic illness or disease, it could be cancer, an autoimmune condition, something that you just can't make it go away. How about depression and anxiety? Sometimes people have chronic anger in their system that just keeps coming up. What about difficult recurring life patterns? tendency for self-sabotage, how often do we do that, right? Even financial and abundance issues, I can relate to that. Difficulty in relationships, how many of us are addic addicted to something, right? We're trying to find more happiness and joy. And how often do we limit our own success? So how do we truly deal and get over this and get through it? I wanna talk about the elusiveness of joy. Okay, we all have blocks, traumas, cellular memories, trapped emotions, limiting negative beliefs, blocked chakras, ancestral patterns, past life experiences, all kinds of things that are buried in our subconscious field. And it limits our ability to have a happy, healthy, joyful life. I mean, yes, you can have temporary joy, like looking at a beautiful baby smile, enjoying a garden full of flowers, playing with your beloved pets, looking into the eyes of a loved one. Many different things can bring us joy. But it's, it can be elusive. It's not something that just sticks with us. So I feel like I was chasing joy my entire life. And I want to tell you a little bit about my story and how I got to doing this work, in a sense. I was born um, actually out on Long Island, New York. And my mother got married as a teenager at 16. She had my brother at 17. She had me at 19. And two years later, she got divorced. So I went through two divorces as a child, okay? Once when I was little, and then my mother remarried. And then when I was about 15, almost 16, she told me they were getting, she was getting divorced again, and I was furious at that point. So going through it again at that point was very difficult for me. I was very angry. I was just, I was furious, you know? I felt like, what is wrong? Is there something wrong with me? Am I not good enough? Um, I, I can't rely on anybody in my life. I didn't feel supported. There was a lot of, there was alcoholism in both sides of my family, a lot of fighting going on. And to me, it was really challenging and difficult. I was always a very sensitive kid. I felt everything and I questioned everything. So that was really challenging. What did I end up doing? I ended up getting married as soon as I turned 19. I had two little kids and by 24, I was a single mom, divorced. And then a few years later, I got remarried again. And, you know, the patterns kind of repeat themselves, right? But the interesting thing is, um, and I just want to tell you a little bit more about my family in a sense. My mother was, her mother was Irish and her father was Czech. So from Czech Republic, they dealt with communism. My grandparents came from there. From Ireland, they dealt with the famine, they dealt with depression, they dealt with alcoholism, things like that. So she came from kind of a poor working farm family. And then my father, his side was German. So they went through the Holocaust and a number of things that happened there, uh, as well as a lot of guilt, depression, a number of things. So underneath all these ancestral patterns, um, you know, being born into these circumstances were a bit challenging for me. 
but here I came into this lifetime, I was actually a very awake and aware little child. I questioned everything. I wanted to know, I was fascinated by life. I was fascinated by the human body, who created this. So at least I had this drive and this instinct. I knew there was more to life. There was more to inner joy. And I kept searching it and seeking it. I was extremely smart, believe it or not. I felt like I had an encyclopedic brain. I didn't even have to study. It was like I would learn things and I would just know it. I would remember it. I graduated with high honors, but I couldn't go to college because our family couldn't afford it. Nobody ever talked to me about student loans or scholarships. So I got married and I had kids because I wanted to prove that I could do a better job, right? So what I ended up doing was I knew as a kid, I had this instinct that I wanted to teach people about all the healing qualities that nature had to offer. Even as a child, I didn't want to take medicine. I would think, why would I take this chemical, especially when I'm sick? I also had some influence when I was a young teenager. I loved to stay at my grandfather's house for a couple of weeks um, in the summertime. And he had this old woman that lived upstairs that rented from him who was an old psychic woman. And my grandfather took care of his business and I would hang out with this lady and she would read my tea leaves and teach me things. And she gave me a book called The Magic of Believing and said that was handed down to her from her other psychic friends with little notes written everywhere. And she said to me, I want you to read this no less than five times, which I did. That changed my life, right? So I was really aware of these things. So when I was young, the, one of the first things I did when I was 19 is I moved away. I wanted to go live in the country and live a more natural lifestyle and raise my kids naturally. I was into herbal medicine. I was studying nutrition. I actually wanted to be a midwife. Um, I became a vegetarian even as a teenager. And I was just... I want to live close to nature. So I put myself through every single school I was drawn to. As far as I studied herbal medicine with some of the top herbalists in the world, I studied nutrition. Um, I knew at a young age I wanted to be an iridologist, which is analysis of the eyes. Um, I also went to school for intuitive diagnosis and energy healing work for a year. One of the things, and then I also went to get my naturopathic degree. I did a tremendous amount of spiritual studies. I actually got a bachelor's of divinity degree. But one of the things that I found was everything that I did was like instinct for me. I knew, even though I was never exposed to herbal medicine, I never heard about it. I never heard the word. I didn't even know what a chiropractor was as a child. I knew I wanted to teach people about this. And what I discovered later was I had a what I call my grandfather guide, a Native American medicine man, which was a guide of mine. And then I found I did have Native American ancestry in my line as well. And I also realized when I was drawn to iridology, I wanted to know this. When I took that course, I immediately knew I just needed to be reminded I already knew this. And next thing you know, I'm traveling with my teacher and helping him teach the advanced classes. Then when I went to school for intuitive diagnosis work, I was drawn to that. And I realized I already knew how to do it. I just needed to be reminded. So, um, and I've become a teacher. I had a 70 acre medicinal herb farm in Vermont that I created. I created a company, actually two companies with herbal product lines, one for animals and one for people. I taught eight month herbal certification programs. I took, back in 1990, the International Avatar course, which was all about consciousness and belief management, and that changed my life. My life shot up like a rocket. So a few years later, I wanted to take the master's course, and I started teaching it. Next thing you know, I became a star master. Um, I took the highest level of the wizard's course seven times. It was every single time. It only happened once a year. It was two solid weeks with people from all around the world, 28 different languages. And every single time I would, I would expand my awareness further and further. But the interesting thing is that was working on beliefs. Um, I still kept thinking about, but where's my actual joy? Because what I didn't realize was underneath my spirit self, there were two threads going on. My joyful spirit self wanted to learn all these things and do all this great stuff, which was fun. But I felt like, I always felt like I was tethered, like there were these strings hanging down that were pulling me down. 
And these were the things that went down into my ancestry. Some of the pain, some of the trauma, some of the grief, some of the um, suffering that happened, some of the guilt that happened, some pains that happened. Our ancestry goes way back. Um, you know, I've had past life dreams and experiences that go way back, um, even to some Egyptian times, which is very interesting to me. So I thought, this is fascinating. I was always fascinated by life. So as a healer, I took every single course you could imagine. And what I ended up doing was developing my own work and my own charts with a lot of inner guidance. And this is the work that I am really being guided to present to you today to help so many people heal. So let me explain this to you. We're actually transitioning into becoming 5D human beings. Now you may not know what that means, but we're used to being third dimensional, right? We live in 3D physical reality here on planet Earth. We have our houses and the trees and stars and the food and everything that we can see, feel, and touch. That's our 3D physical reality, including our voice, our mind, our emotions. But we can have many old vows, old wounds, old agreements, old traumas, old violence, karma, betrayal, entities, doubts, fears, all these things that can underlie our lives if we're not aware of them. Many, you know, we usually are not. So we can't carry these into the newer, higher realms of conscious awareness, 5D. It's open for us now. But, and the fourth dimension to me is really a portal between your emotional body, your third dimensional body, and your fifth dimension. So our emotions, when they're elevated emotions, can bring us up into that higher state of being and presence and awareness and peace and joy and awareness and loving. But our emotions can also bring us right back down into that 3D physical stuck reality with our ego mind, our thoughts, our judgments, our fears, beliefs, and limitations. Even Eckhart Tolle said, if you don't mind being unhappy, what happens to the unhappiness? So I want to talk a little bit about life because it's really like the tip of the iceberg, right? What you see at the top here is what we're aware of. This is our reality. But it's a very small piece of who we really are. Underneath it all, we do have our subconscious mind. We do have unconscious mind as well. Things that we're not even aware of. We do things unconsciously. We have ancestral patterns. That's a little bit different than inherited patterns. Okay. We also have past life traumas. We have cultural traumas. Think about women have cultural traumas that we can feel as a gender. We have racial traumas, traumas right? Many races have suffered horrible um, things happening. And we hold that in our cultural patterns. So we have societal trauma. All you have to do is put on the news and you see how much trauma our society is in. We also have our Akashic records, which are our soul's records of all lifetimes, past, present, and future. So there's so much underneath. So to me, those were like the strings that were pulling me down. No matter how much I tried to learn and do and heal and help myself, help other people, all these things I really needed to pay attention to and clear a lot of them. And then it became, I became more, more buoyant, more light, more joyous. You know, life became easier. I wasn't being brought down and tethered quite as much. And think about, you know, you hear the term quite a bit about an old soul, right? Just how deep is an old soul? Okay, you've probably heard about things like the emotion code, you can clear trapped emotions, but you can take this to deeper levels, right? Because we are more than just physical bodies that hold emotions. We have our core challenges and limitations. We have our inherited ancestral patterns, beliefs, things that never got truly healed, traumas. We've had many past lives. I can tell you many of mine. We have old wounds, traumas, betrayal. We've been betrayed, hurt, wounded, uh, violence. We have karma, entities, belief systems. We have an ego mind. We have our worries, our fears, our anxiety, and our stress. Now that can feel a little bit overwhelming, but we're always looking for joy in our life. We're all, every single one of us on this planet is trying to find more love, more joy, and more peace in our lives, right? 
the older the soul, the deeper the patterns go. And many old souls actually are amazing healers because they had a commitment to help heal some of these challenges from their ancestors so they don't have to continue and get passed on. So I can relate to that and probably many of you can as well. So have you heard about the Rainbow Bridge? Remember back in December of 2012 when everything was shifting, right? And I kept hearing that this is the time when we can cross this rainbow bridge to a new level of conscious awareness, a higher state of being, more loving, more kind, more compassionate, more aware, right? But we can't bring our old baggage with us. And I've heard everybody's going to be crossing this rainbow bridge into a higher state of being. This is the ascension process that we are all going through right now. And many um, old souls, many healers are actually crossing it first, but we have to release the old baggage. We cannot take it with us because it pulls our energy down. We have so many emotional centers in the body that burden us. You know, every single area of the body, every single cell, we have cellular memories, every organ, our meridians can get blocked, our chakras. It's really quite interesting. I want to give you an example. Um, Okay. You might need an emotional detox, but it's even more than just emotions. But let me just give this example. What if you have chronic anger that keeps bubbling up or chronic anxiety? It drives up your cortisol levels to the point where your inflammation becomes high, right? If you have pain, you have inflammation and you have high cortisol levels. Five minutes of anger will drive up your cortisol for the next six hours. Anger can actually destroy your immune system wreaks havoc with your digestion, drives up your blood sugar, raises your blood pressure, thins your bones, kills your brain cells, and more. Nothing in your life will actually work out until you clear the anger issues. And that's just one example. We all have things. I believe that every single person on this planet comes into this lifetime with their own set of strengths, but their own set of challenges that they're here to work through and heal and master to become the absolute best version of themselves. And as you already know, everything is energy. It is well known we are not just 3D physical bodies. Ill health, poor health begins in the energy field first. If you can clear the field of negative influences, the body responds quite rapidly. Even Donna Eden said, by clearing chakras that are still locked into the conflicts of your past, you can open the way for healing chronic and underlying health problems. And it's really extraordinary how essential this work is. It is not just about, okay, what vitamins do I take? What diet should I take? What herbs and nutrients? How, how do I cleanse my physical body? We have to go deeper than that. That's, the, that's just the tip of the iceberg, okay? And the time is now. Seriously, we are living in a time of accelerated change. We are transforming and evolving to a new level of participating on this planet, a higher dimension of being. We're playing at a whole new level. It's crucial at this point. It's time for evolving into higher levels of being. So imagine clearing out old karma that you never have to go through again. Residual debris from your past lives, ancestral vibrations and patterns. We can clean the slate. It actually, much of this debris actually clings to our DNA, if you see this picture here, and impacts our health, our vitality, even our level of success. So it's essential that we help assist each other in clearing these things. I really call this alchemy. <clears throat> it's an alchemy of healing, right? It's a process of transmutation. It helps us to reunite with our actual, true, divine, or original form. We can transform stuck emotions and energies into something beneficial. We can increase our vibration. We can clear out the old patterns that cling to our DNA. That's extraordinary. And that is where healing happens sometimes rapidly. And it is essential for truly healing serious chronic challenges in our life. So ancient Egyptian healing. In this course I will be, or in the work that I do, I, I'm introducing the powerful ancient Egyptian pendulums and tools that you can learn how to use them professionally. I will teach you to master them. You can effectively identify and clear items no matter how deep. 
we use over 16 charts that I've developed to explore what is needed to clear or what is it that we need to include. Okay, this system works easily, safely, and effectively every single time. Clients may enjoy a series of several sessions because they want to go deeper and deeper. It's like peeling away layers of an onion. You know, we're never actually finished. You never actually reach the end of the internet. You know, we can reach deep into our core and really clear out so much and experience more alignment with our higher self, with our inner joy, our true purpose, our true passion in life. Things become very clear as we become more aligned. So these are a few of the sacred geometry tools that I will be introducing. I'm not going to talk too much about them right now, but they are powerful tools based on sacred geometry that we've used thousands of years ago. So, and then I'll also teach you how to use a biotensor, which is in the bottom right-hand corner here, a rod for getting answers very quickly. Even, even if you have no idea how to do muscle testing or dowsing, this can help tremendously, very simply. So you can learn how to master this fine art. You can become an expert. I will teach you the very first um, part of this course is going to be teaching you how to be an expert at dowsing correctly. There are so many ins and outs, so many do's and don'ts, ways to troubleshoot, ways to know if you're actually getting actual answers or is it just reflecting what you believe, how to ask questions correctly, even how to calibrate your tools. You can discover a wealth of information. And you don't have to be psychic to do it. You can just ask questions. You connect with the person with their permission and find out what is their biggest areas of concern and ask some of the questions. You can get very accurate with these tools. You can call in. I'm going to teach you how to work on anyone's energy field, no matter where they're located on the planet. Then we go into the art of deep clearing. Okay. Now, one of the reasons why I don't really prefer muscle testing, I, I sometimes do that with my clients in my office, but not always, because there are several different people that you can't accurately muscle test. Okay, if somebody was, is dehydrated, they do not test well. If their neck or spine is out of alignment in any way at all, they do not muscle test well. When someone's in a chronic sympathetic stress response, they don't test accurately. Or if they're in chronic pain and inflammation, that can be challenging too. So this leaves dowsing tools, which are very quick and proficient. I don't have to wonder if their physical body is able to do it, and I don't have to have them be right in front of me. Okay, there's actually no limits to this. You can work with anyone, anywhere, and it's very accurate and effective because everything is energy. We are all connected. The only thing that separates us is the space in between us. Okay. And then you're going to learn how to use a variety of different charts, okay? There's trapped emotional challenges. Discovering what realm did this come from? Was it from this lifetime? Was it prenatal, ancestral? Was it from um, past patterns? Um, there's a whole chart for that. Relationship challenges, what's going on there for you? Um, what are you doing to block your own sense of self-empowerment? Do you have core fears that need to be brought up and released? Many of us do. How about inner challenges that keep coming up for you? Um, areas to explore for your own self-empowerment. What do you use to block self-relationship? Addictions. How about chakras, stuck energy in our chakras, in our organs, in our glands? Where in your body do you hold these limiting patterns? What does your physical body need? How about limiting core beliefs? that just keeps showing up like, oh, I'm just not good enough. You know, I'm never supported. You know, I've had to do everything on my own. Nobody's really been there to encourage me and support me. These are some of the things that I grew up with. You know, we never have enough. You have to work really hard to make money and you still never have enough. Life is a struggle, life is serious, life is a challenge, all these things. But what empowering beliefs, once we clear out all the space, what empowering beliefs can we put in to help you really shine? Okay, what is needed for correction? What are some of the virtues? What are some of the principal values in life that you're really here to master? They're all right there. Every single one of us is doing this. This is a huge part of the healing process. And what do you need to master your infinite beingness? There's a chart for that. 
that will bring up exactly what is needed. So as we go through this process, we unravel a lot. It reveals a lot. And then we clear a lot, but then also we put in that open space, the positive, intentional um, beliefs and energies that your body needs to support who you are and what you're doing. Okay, so if you'd like to take the certification course, it's online. It, it consists of four two-hour training modules, and then we'll have four mastermind calls as well. So it's eight weeks over a course of a period of time here. Um, over a couple of months, I'll be offering this course probably about three to four times a year. You'll also have some lab assignments where you'll be working with each other, other students, and giving each other feedback, sharing your successes, Plus, you'll be working with a few clients to practice. You will get all the forms. You will get the classes itself. You'll get, um, you'll get the PDFs, the forms to use, um, how to use, where to get the tools. Everything you absolutely need will be there. You can review the online webinars as well if you want to review or if you happen to miss something. Plus, there'll be a private Facebook community just for the students and graduates to talk about their experiences, their testimonies, ask questions, support each other. I'll be involved in that well, so you'll have ongoing support and you'll get a beautiful certificate of mastery saying that you mastered the ancient healing keys. So um, I will be working on, this first one is a pilot course. So I'm also working on, we'll have a particular website where as this expands, people can go and find who is certified in their state to do this or in their area. So learn to become a master of these ancient healing tools because what I received, the information I received was, it is time for me to share this because I kept thinking so many people need this. This is so helpful, so essential. And yet, how do I get it out to a number of people? It's okay. My guide said to me, you have to teach other healers. It doesn't matter if you're an energy healer, a psychotherapist, a natural therapist, an herbalist, Reiki master, yoga teacher, massage therapist, or even just a health enthusiast that you want to help people. Definitely, you can take this course. So this introductory course is currently being offered at 397, and you can be one of the first ones to graduate. You'll get everything included. It's gonna be held on Tuesday evenings. We're starting in the beginning of October. So time to register would be now, so you can get a couple of your tools ahead of time and be ready to just dive in. I will also be offering this class live in Asheville. I haven't set the dates for those yet, but please let me know if you're interested in that. So all health practitioners are invited to participate. Okay, so you can register now for up ongoing support. So you can contact me, Dr. Jane Smolnick. My phone number is 828-777-JANE or email drjanesmolnick at gmail.com if you have any questions. If you'd like to do a one-on-one -on -one discovery call, if you want to talk with me about it and see if this is something that's right for you, please give me a call. I'm happy to do that. You can also go to register at awakenmywisdom.com. Okay, I also have a Facebook page called Awaken My Wisdom, which you can join. A lot of inspiring information I'll be sharing there. If you go to my website, please join, um, subscribe to my newsletter. You'll get my free ebook called It's My Time to Advance. And you will be, um, I'll let you know about any upcoming courses that keep coming up, okay, and classes. So I hope that was helpful for you. Please contact me if you have any questions. Let me stop sharing my screen. So again, I really thank you for taking the time to listen to this. And I hope it's something that inspires you. If you would like, I'm offering a special offering for $50 off a personal private one-on-one -on -one session with me, which is done by phone. Okay, so go to my website. My regular website is also ultimatehealing.com. That's where you can book a session. So please call me if you have any questions. Thank you so much. I appreciate it very well. Thank you.